Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In my previous video, I have shown you how to use task data frame to import large data files. In this video, we will be talking shortly about the comparison between DASK and Pandas. Basically, when you should start using DASK because we all as a beginner start with Pandas data frame. So here we will be discussing some of the differences and probably in the next video we will also compare DASK with PySpark because many of you uh, might have heard about using a Spark for scalability. So we will be talking about that in some future video. So as of now, I will find a very popular library to import uh, data frames, to manipulate, to do all those data processing, data transformation, and uh, it's really wonderful too. But there is a limitation that pandas was not designed for scalability. If you have a very large data set, then you start seeing problems in panda. Either it takes too long to perform the operation, or sometimes it just fails to import that data set. So if you have a large data set, you need to think of the alternatives. So if you are beginning your career into data science, you don't need that. You can still use pandas. But if you are doing some projects in which your data size is too large, then you need to look for alternatives and that uh, is there for you. When I talk about large data size, uh, what do we mean by large data size? So basically, uh, it's a rough categorization. And uh, what size of data we call it small or medium or large data size, it will depend upon how powerful your system is. So maybe for your system, you can handle a 10 GB data set uh, which fits into your RAM also. So it depends upon uh, your machine also. But the rough categorization means small data set would be meaning the data set which can comfortably fit in the RAM and leave some memory for computation part. So you can quickly uh, do manipulation with the data. Then uh, you can definitely use pandas there. Medium data set would be known as a data set that does not fit into your RAM, but that fits uh, on your local disk. So for medium data set, you can still import the data set. You can do computation on your single machine. But it would be slower when you will doing uh, when you will be doing data processing. It would be much slower. So at this time point, you might start thinking of using parallel computing. In parallel computing, what uh, we mean that you would like to use uh, multiple cores to perform the same task, which is speed up your task. And the uh, task come to your rescue. So task is basically a wrapper, which is built on top of pandas. So if you are comfortable with pandas, it would not take too much to learn task. Uh, and understand how it works. And if you have large data set, so roughly the size here is written greater than 2 TB, but again it's, uh, it's subjective. So for large data set uh, that usually don't fit in the RAM and uh, neither they fit on the local disk. So you can't uh, handle those data sets using a single machine. That time you need to use distributed computing means you need to do computing on multiple machines. So definitely you can do it with DAS. So DAS can help you perform data manipulation on a single machine as well as if you have a large data set, you, uh, it helps you to perform it on cluster of machines. How it works actually when I'm saying large data uh, sets and uh, it's better to use uh, DAS. So let's see, suppose uh, in any data set you have some variables and suppose you have 50 variables and you have suppose one lab observation. So starting from uh, in Python index, it start from zero. But I'm just talking about observation numbers, which is one, two, three. And suppose you have here one lab observation. Now you want to do some data manipulation, transformation, some operation on the data frame. If you do it in pandas, it will do it sequentially. It is a little slower. And uh, depending upon, again, the data size, the task you are performing, and the system's performance. But if you do it in, uh, this is for pandas, but if you do it in DAS, what it will do is it will allow you to split the data frame. And uh, you can split your data frame in different uh, partitions. So suppose in your first partition, you have rows up to 1, 2, up to here 20,000 and sub this is your partition number 1. Then you have uh, next observation to 20,001 observation number this up to 40,000 your partition number 2. And similarly, you will have different partition, and last partition would be 80,000 to uh, 1 lakh. So this would be your last partition. 
so these are the partition which you can create by using dask and dask will use parallel computing means uh, for doing the same task it will use multiple cores so one operation would be performed on one core of the machine similarly in parallel it will perform the same operation on this partition in parallel it will perform the same operation on this partition and so on so this make it faster as compared to pandas there are other uh, things also which makes uh, dask faster than pandas but uh, you can see here in this example the same uh, concept is explained by using these pictures that this is a small data set they are just showing 10 observation it's okay and they are showing that uh, how you can uh, do data partitioning and you can work in parallel this is just the concept how dask is faster than pandas and what makes the uh, dask great is uh, their api so if we talk about dask apis uh, the, it can be categorized into three layers so at the core it is a task scheduler it means uh, it schedules the task uh, into different cores it divides the data and uh, on top of that it has uh, two low level api which are dask delayed api and uh, dask future so basically these are the api we will talk about these apis in great detail later on when we will be doing hands on uh, using the so dask delays is basically for lazy computation which delays the computation in case you don't immediately need those things which makes it faster you might have seen in the previous video when we were using data frame dot describe it was not computing all those values it was just showing the structure and data types and if you really need to see then you need to use compute method and it will compute those values so this was the example of uh, dask delay uh, when um, it just calculate just in time and dask future means it's eager um, so it will compute all the values uh, whether you need immediately or not we will talk about all these things later on but uh, just to show you that on top of task scheduler it has these low level api and on top of these low level api it has some high level api and high level api makes it very makes it very easy and popular to use so what are those high level api it uses uh, dask back uh, which is parallel to python list and it has the uh, dask data frame which is uh, very similar to pandas data frame and it has a uh, dask array similar to pandas pipe panel so these are the high level api if you see here a uh, dask array okay dask array is parallel to numpy dask back is parallel to list dask uh, data frame parallel to pandas data frame and yes there is one more dask uh, ml which is parallel to scikit learn so you see if you are comfortable with numpy list pandas and scikit learn you can use most of the function in the same fashion in dask also now uh, why we need dask we have already seen that uh, dask is fully implemented in python and it native is scale numpy pandas and scikit learn so if you are uh, comfortable with python syntax if you are comfortable with numpy pandas scikit learn then you can easily switch to dask without any overhead of learning a new language or new syntax and dask can be used effectively to work on both medium data sets on a single machine and large data set on a cluster so we have already talked about uh, when you want to work on data set which does not fit into your memory so depending upon your data set you can choose whether you want to work on a single machine or a large uh, data for a large data set you can use cluster of machine dask can be used uh, as a general framework for parallelizing uh, most of the python objects so this is again an advantage and basically uh, if you are comfortable using python it would be quite easy to quickly uh, start using dask and it has a very low configuration and maintenance overhead you can simply uh, install dask using pip for conda install function you don't need to spend a lot of time into maintaining dask and uh, switching between dask and python and uh, you see it is optimized to minimize the memory footprint we have seen that uh, it can gracefully handle medium data set um, relatively on low powered machine as of now you might be thinking these two are critical but when we will be working on medium or maybe large data set uh, in practice then you will see that uh, what does it mean when we say it gracefully handle medium data set and it also support interfacing with block popular cluster resources yarn uh, mesos and kubernetes so if you are new to these words if you don't know uh, you can uh, as of now skip uh, this detail uh, you will get to know when you start using these things for uh, clustering on multiple machines 
and definitely it's very lightweight and easy to set up we have already discussed so all its dependencies can be installed just by using pip or conda package manager so it's actually easy to kick start working with dask and uh, as we start working and as we take some data set to understand dask it uh, becomes very intuitive to look at all these uh, advantages of using dask but if dask is that good why can't we use dask always Uh, why do, why do we need to use pandas because dask has some limitations also so dask data frame although it is built on top of pandas data frame still it does not expose the entire pandas api so uh, you can see that some of the pandas function does not simply uh, work well with the dask or distributed environment because uh, if you are using the functions like join merge group by rolling these functions actually these are supported by dask but these functions usually need a lot of shuffling because if you are using group by so you are categorizing data on the basis of some categorical variable so it would require a lot of shuffling when you uh, compute something when you summarize something uh, on the basis of those categories similarly join and merge i hope you are already aware of these functions in pandas then only you will be able to relate it to uh, how to use that in dask so it makes it uh, slower when we use these functions in dask but there is a way out uh, if you set an index it becomes uh, faster let me show you how it is faster and indexing definitely have few challenges in dask uh, so if you want to reset index because you are working on distributed environment or maybe you are working on a single machine but you have split it your data frame into multiple partition now you are resetting the index so definitely it would be a challenging task and uh, you see here uh, i'll show you that uh, how these functions like group by and apply functions and merge and join function so if you simply use group by and apply like this df dot group by and some um, variable x and you apply some function here or if you simply use uh, this merge function merging two data frames df1 and df2 then it is slower because it requires shuffling but you can cleverly use it by applying it on an index suppose you use group by and you define idx this uh, as an index and rest of the things are same so idx is the index level name then it becomes faster similarly if you use merge function and you define it on idx so idx is basically index name for both data frame df1 and df then it becomes easy and faster to use uh, dask for these operations and uh, we have already seen that uh, you can perform the task of transformation manipulation uh, which are slower in pandas you can do that in dask and then you can finally dump your data frame again into pandas using the compute method then you are good to go with pandas function so it makes it easy to uh, use uh, dask because you can quickly switch between dask and pandas and uh, then we will also talk about when to use and when not to use dask data frame so we have already seen and discussed multiple times that for manipulating large data set large means uh, if the data set don't fit in the ram or uh, they don't fit in the local machine also for those kind of data set we can think of using dask there are some other alternatives also but dask is better because we see that uh, it is built on top of uh, popular python library it makes it easy to use dask it's lightweight also no maintenance uh, overhead there and uh, accelerating long computation by using many codes so we have already seen if we are using long computation if we are training a machine learning model which is taking too long so we might think of using parallel computing by using many cores of a single machine it will make that fast and distributed computing uh, with standard pandas operation so again if we want to use distributed computing and when not to use dask data frame so basically your data frame uh, if your data set comfortably fits into your ram then you may better off just uh, using pandas because pandas is simpler and we usually prefer using easy and simple things first so if your data frame fits well into your system if you are having good speed you don't need to use dask only if it is slower there if you have a large data frame then too you need to think if you can uh, do some of the task in numpy because that is faster than pandas data frame so you need to think is step wise and even if that doesn't work even uh, if it is that slow then uh, you should uh, start using dask and uh, if you need functions that are not implemented in dask data frame then you might want to look at dask delayed and dask delayed offers more flexibility but as i said uh, we will talk about uh, it later 
how to use dask delay object. So here basically we have just summarized when to use dask and when to use pandas. In short you can see that in terms of functionality pandas is still win and in terms of performance and scalability dask is ahead of pandas. Maybe in our upcoming uh, videos we will be talking about PySpark, we will be introducing Saturn Cloud and we will be uh, showing some of the dask uh, functionality, dask delay, dask feature, these objects. I would just like to show you a clip from an interview of co-founder of Saturn Cloud, Kushi, about data science. And in this uh, short interview, he has answered uh, these uh, important questions. So I would just like uh, to show you what he says uh, when to introduce Dask. Let's listen to him. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask, what are your thoughts on, like, when you start introducing Dask, right? Is there a point in time where you're programming coding and you're like, okay, this could be really, like, a lot faster? Um, is there a certain point in, in a process where you would recommend people start introducing Dask? Or do you think they should do yes. that from the beginning? No, as late as possible. So okay. what I mean is that you should start, you should always start with the easiest thing. Right? Mm -hmm. So typically Pandas is the easiest thing. And so if Pandas is doing what you need, that's great. Um, mm -hmm. If Pandas is a little bit too slow, then you should try to see if you can lift the parts that are too slow into NumPy. That's generally the fastest way to get easy levels of performance. Okay. Um, if that's either too hard or too slow, um, mm -hmm. then I would then I would start looking at um, Dask, mm -hmm. and I would definitely start with Dask on a single machine. So I would get the biggest machine I could get, and then I would um, well, first of all, I would get the biggest machine I would get, and I would just use Pandas and see how that goes. Okay, okay. And if, Step one. if that doesn't work out, then I would take that same machine and I would put Dask on it so I could take advantage of the multiple cores. Mm -hmm. If that's still not enough, then you can set up a Dask cluster. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I say that is just because I think in data science we have a trend, we have a tendency to focus too much on scale. Yeah. Um, and scale is important, but most people uh, think that they have scale problems when they don't. And mm -hmm. so it's good to not push that too early. Okay. So it's good to stay in the ways. region. It's good to stay in the easy parts as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Makes sense. Thank you for watching.